Tom Hoagie making quite the charge on Saturday. This on 17, a little more than 40 feet away. And you know things are working when putts like this find the bottom of the cup. He's bogey free, six under, 64 as he is the leader. Welcome into Golf Central. George Savarikis, Billy Kratzer, Jim Gallagher Jr. And what a third round he was able to put together, Billy. Well, Tom Hoagie played well. I mean, shooting uh, 10 under par in the two opening rounds, 65 65, and then backing it up with six under today. That's very impressive. In fact, the only two players that I saw make any putts at all. Tom Hoagie, Patton Kazire. Mm -hmm. Other than that, I thought all the other players missed a lot of opportunities for birdie today. They did. They were real inconsistent with their speed. I saw a lot of putts short, but you didn't see that with Tommy. The seventh in approach, uh, strokes gained approach today. In the first six holes, he did inside 20 feet, uh, all six of those holes. So he took advantage of that good start, continued to hit the ball well. But his putts were going in with some pretty confident speed for sure. All right, let's check out the leaderboard from Wiley Country Club. It is Tom Hoagie at the top. You see it 16 under par. Brian Harmon had a three shot lead coming into the third round. Two under 68, so he's in a tie for second with Patton Kazire. You see some of the other notables lurking on the first page of that leaderboard. Let's uh, hear from the guys now as 54 holes are in the books. Yeah, for me, it's it's always come down if I drive it and play because I'm a pretty good iron player and wedge player. So if I can get the ball in the fairway, I should have a lot of looks. And uh, that's been the case this week. I haven't made as many putts as I would like to, but I've been right around the hole most, most chances. So it's been good. Yeah, being in the last group's tough, you know. You got to, especially because we've been playing, we've been playing. Hey, cut that off. We've been playing, playing pretty early, playing pretty early, and, and today we 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 tee off at, at one something. So, sleeping in a little bit more, a little groggy, just just wasn't quite on my game today. Well, my caddy looked at me and told me that Saturday in Mexico started kind of similar, kind of a rough start. Uh, so he kind of settled me in and uh, just kept believing in myself and tried to give myself opportunities and stay patient. Uh, my whole thing is I'm just trying to stay patient until I get hot. That, that's what I always try to remind myself and uh, I did that today. For those wondering, what has the 54-hole uh, position of the winner been the last five years in this event? Well, three of the five years, they either led or were the co-leader going into the final round, one of the biggest comebacks two years ago. Maybe in Gomez was four shots back, and then he went on to win the Sony Open. Wasn't exactly a leisurely Saturday morning for those in Oahu. Uh, there was quite the scare around Hawaii, around Hawaii, sending people into a panic. There was an emergency alert sent to cell phones in Hawaii warning of an incoming ballistic missile attack. The alert was an inaccurate false alarm caused by human error, 8.07 a.m. local Hawaii time. Todd Lewis is covering this week's event, the Sony Open. Todd, you saw the alert this morning. What exactly was the scene like? Well, it was confusing. Uh, there was a lot of fear. We couldn't really understand what was going on because once we got that alert, it said this is not a drill. And that was really alarming. At my hotel, I was with a couple of PGA Tour members and Rob Oppenheim and Sam Saunders. We were calling our friends, our family, anybody that we could get a hold of to try to give us more information to find out if indeed this alert was accurate. And it was happening all across the golf world. Media officials, caddies, players. I talked to several of them about what happened this morning. They were calling their family members at home, some thinking that they were saying goodbye. Others actually took action, like Michael Greller. He and his wife and their young son, they were in a car. They started driving away from Honolulu east, trying to get over the mountain range, which they thought could protect them if indeed a missile was here. And John Peterson, he and his wife and their young son and other members of the family put themselves in a bathroom, put mattresses around them in a bathtub. It was indeed a scary situation. We caught up with some other players about how they handled this morning. I don't know why, but it never went through to my phone. I, uh, I Tom Lovelady screenshot it and sent it to me and asked what was going on. And I was like, eh, I mean, there's nothing I could do. So I, I sat in my couch and opened up the the sliding door and watch TV and listen to music and I was like if it's my time it's my time there's really nothing I can do we didn't know where to go we didn't know you know if there was something you know that was set up for a situation like that and I think uh, it was pretty re revealing in the fact that there's not and uh, so we felt like we should be doing something and, and there was no action steps so we just uh, we felt like we were just sitting ducks it was a little scary at first um, I didn't think, you know, with 
no sirens. Not, we didn't hear anything. Um, I didn't think too much of it, but it was definitely, when you first got the alert, it was pretty scary at first. My wife was out walking, and uh, I mean, she called me, me straight away. And my first reaction was, uh, I mean, my heart started beating a little bit faster, and I went out to the, the balcony of the hotel I was staying at, and like, I don't know what I was expecting to see, like a missile flying into Waikiki. I mean, I don't know, it was a horrible uh, message to get, obviously, but uh, I'm certainly glad it was, uh, it was a mistake. What was so confusing during that time, that half hour when everything was going on, was the fact that the local television stations here in Honolulu and Hawaii were saying that this is not a drill, take shelter immediately, while the national cable news stations weren't reporting anything. Obviously, it worked out for the best, but I can tell you, fear and confusion for that half hour, the dominant feelings for those here in Hawaii. Yeah, George? Todd, definitely a, a nerve-wracking morning, to say the least. Appreciate it. Still to come, how the defending champ at the Sony Open, Justin Thomas, fair in round number three. Was he finally able to break the 67 barrier? More Golf Central after this break. Sony Open defending champ Justin Thomas hanging around. Check out the second shot to the 10th. Yeah, having to elevate it quickly, but then the judgment on it is just so perfect, George. This ball rolls out, releases down there. Had that left for birdie. Guy with a lot of power showing some touch there on 10 as JT gets in with a 4 under 66. He's at 10 under par, still hanging around in the mix as we take a look at some of the notables on that list. You see Blaine Barber with a 72. He is at 1 under par, and Barber didn't have his normal caddy on the bag. An unfortunate accident last night with his normal guy, Corey Gilmer, had Corey hospitalized. Rex Hoggard is at the Sony Open. Rex what exactly happened? Well, this is what we know, George. We had a chance to talk with Blaine after his round. He was at dinner with Corey and Blaine Barber's brother, Shane, who stepped in for Corey on Saturday here at the Sony Open. They went to dinner. Afterwards, Corey went to go meet some friends. He was only at a restaurant with them for a couple of minutes, and they still don't know exactly how it happened, but he fell off a, a high chair hit his head, the ambulance had to come, take him to a local hospital. Again, he hadn't gotten an update since this morning before he teed off, but as of right now, he has been unresponsive since they got him to the hospital. He's in a neurological ICU, ICU unit. He's in critical condition. Obviously, Blaine went to the hospital last night, spent the majority of the night there, went back this morning to spend some time with him. He did talk to the doctors. They said they are not considering surgery at this moment. He was waiting again for another update, and he's very, very hopeful. But that's all we have for you right now. All right, Rex, definitely a scary situation for sure. And folks, remember tomorrow you can catch final round of the Sony Open. Our coverage from Oahu begins 5.30 Eastern time. Then we will take you out live as things unfold for the last 18 holes of Wildlife Country Club.